Tonya here, your host of The Alchemy of Me, where we navigate the anatomy of humanity through the lens of science and spirituality. Let's unearth the layers and unravel the systems in place that dim who we are and how we live and experience life. On this journey together, we'll weave in an eclectic blend of mind, body, energy, medicine, concepts, tools, and practices that'll nourish the seeds, the fire, that gold of intelligence that is you. This is an opportunity, your opportunity to reclaim, to rediscover, to transform, to alchemize you. The Alchemy of Me show starts now. Hello, hello, Tanya here again, your host of The Alchemy of Me, where we explore the anatomy of humanity through the lens of science and spirituality. And I am so excited to be joined yet again with our dear Jessica Lang. And if you were able to catch the last episode, um, Jessica was here. And so we're really just looking today to to deepen um, where we started. So continuing on with our conversation. And before we do that, I want to just... I want to highlight again kind of Jessica's background. So Jessica is a sanctioned teacher by Don Oscar Miro Casada, co-founder of the Heart of the Healer Shamanic Mystery School, the lineage under which Jessica is a wisdom keeper for the Pachacuti Mesa tradition, cross-cultural shamanic arts for personal and planetary renewal. Jessica also carries the legacy and spirit of her late teacher, Keith Wilson, founder of Keith's Cacao through her communion with and service to the sacred plant medicine cacao. Deeply committed to the practice of Aini or sacred reciprocity, Jessica is dedicated to providing opportunities for energetic expansion through ceremony, ritual, creative expression, shamanic lineage teachings, and hermetic wisdom. From communions with the spirit of cacao and shamanic journeying to to workshops and apprenticeships, Jessica serves as a soul journey partner, empowering individuals to align with source and their highest destiny. So welcome back, Jessica. It is a pleasure to continue on this journey with you. I am, I am, I'm excited to see what comes up today. I feel like we went, we went deep last time, but we were just really scratching the surface. So, um, before we dive in, do you want to do you want to add anything else there? Um, I am just excited to be here today, and I'm so grateful that you were so gracious in having me back for a part two, so we could kind of sink our teeth in a little bit more and and just um, just just deep dive because there's there's so much. It was just as you said, just scratching the surface and. I am just grateful that you're um, offering this platform for these very, very beautiful and very important um, ideas to be expressed out into the field and to, to share together and in, in being open to how spirit is going to co-create with us today. <laughs> yes. Well said. What a... Um... Yeah, I mean, it's an honor to be able to uh, to allow that, right? Um, and I say allow, but it's really um, being open to, right? I mean, it's it's something that we all have access to if we allow ourselves to, and that's kind of a part of um, what I think we're going to be discovering today. Where we're going to be weaving in this, um, you know, it's the idea of how 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 we are able to align with um, the divine and, 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 and then too, from there, um, kind of that the, the range of what that can look like from, you know, living in a certain place and, you know, really connecting it to how we live life. So it's, it's from one end of the spectrum to the other. And I think we're, assuming we have enough time, we're going to look at it through a couple different lenses um, today. So with that, I want to actually start with a quote from you. Um, Let's see, I have it here. In order to move forward, we must humbly surrender 
We are but a tuning fork uniquely designed to resonate with the universal force. So with that, can you just, let's just start there. What, what does that mean? Let's kind of, let's kind of break that down. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for, for bringing that in. Um, this was, this was something, this was a message that I received a number of years ago um, during a very, a, a, a bit of a chaotic time uh, in my life um, where you could say the volume was very turned up in, in the world that I was experiencing around me. Um, and the beautiful thing is that um, with, this, with this practice of faith and trust, um, we are able to, to, and in the space of allowance, as you said, we are able to always have beautiful guidance. And this is, this message is this guidance that I received. And it's funny because its relevance is, is I feel timeless. It was very uh, acute in its, in its uh, power for me at the time. And, and still it is, it is this place. And so I think what's key in, in this message is the space of well, a couple of things moving forward, right? That being everything is in motion. Everything is dynamic and constantly changing. And so the first is embracing this as a universal principle that that is a constant change and growth is dynamic. And that is a basic principle and design of life that it is ever evolving and dynamic. Um, so for us to move forward, to stay with this flow, which is essential, <laughs> mm -hmm. we must humbly surrender. Surrendering comes to this space that you talked about with allowing and pausing. And I think we're going to be able to explore today what this can look like in the day that we have. Um, finding these moments throughout the day to pause and surrender can certainly be a triggering word. <laughs> it has, it's a very loaded word and, Maybe another time we can even just spend a show talking about surrender. In this context, surrendering to the present moment, coming to center. And the idea of us as a tuning fork in this idea of harmonic resonance is that we are the tuning fork and the, the resonance that we are, we are designed to align, divine, divinely align with a resonance of peace. And that is a peace that we hold within. And to find this harmonic alignment, we need to, we need to pause and we need to get quiet and we need to presence and tune out all of those dissonant waves and all of the other frequencies so that we can come into this true alignment. And this is, this is, I think, hopefully, um, a good jumping off point. <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank you. Um, it's just, it's interesting. And I, I, I suspect everybody, I mean, we all are experiencing life in our own ways, right? Each of us, um, nobody knows how I have experienced life because I have experienced it through the lens of how I see life. And it's the same with you. It's the same with every single um, individual on the planet, which is you know, thinking of that um, piece is so important because it kind of, it, it invites in grace, right? Because we don't know where the other is coming from. Um, and with that though, what you're, what you're saying and what you're 
um, opening up to is this idea of that even though each and every one of us have experienced life, you know, no matter how tragic or simple we see it from moment to moment, we each have access to this, this, this beautiful um, alignment, right? Yes. Yes. So, so with that, so knowing that and kind of that confirm, confirmation of from there, how do we align with the center? How do we, how do we create space in our lives um, to do this? I, I think that this, it comes down to a choice that we make, we're making it, we make choices, we make choices every minute, maybe even more frequently than every minute about where we're directing our awareness. And so a lot of this can be begin at the, at the beginning of our day with intention, that we are going to begin our day with the intention of, of being open, and curious about what is presenting in this day and and really also um, bringing in these this vibration of love and trust knowing that this experience even in its most acute forms that impact us on a physical level is truly for us and having this mindset that this experience is for us how can we open and soften into what the present moment is here to teach us how this moment is meant to or designed to help us to uh, perhaps reflect to integrate a lesson that we've already mastered because that happens a lot too. I thought I already. I already <laughs> <did>. Yes. <laughs> and, then it comes, and then it comes back again, but this is just, it's a, it's a beautiful moment to be able to reflect and further integrate the wisdom that you've gleaned from a different experience from, from an experience. And then, Again, moving forward with that. But the mindset that we begin each day with, I think, is very important to be able to give ourselves the opportunity to pause, to empower ourselves to pause um, whenever we are feeling any dissonance. Whenever we're feel if something is presenting in your experience in a particular moment, it's an opportunity to pause and to get curious and to treat yourself with a lot of love and compassion and get curious to ask, what is this uncomfortable feeling that you're having? And starting to move from that space with the mindset that there is something here for you and, and I'm sure we can we can kind of deepen into this a little more, but I will, I will pause there. <laughs> That's beautiful. So I, I actually, um, I want to, I want to talk about that a little bit because I think that's important. You know, we talk about the pause and we both, um, we both kind of know what that means and, and, and have explored that a lot. Um, and, there's probably a lot of people that know what that means um, or what, what we mean by that. But if I had to, if I had to go back to myself, you know, before I started down this journey um, of kind of wanting something different out of life it, and, but not knowing how to get there. Um, I do. I remember I had a, I had a coach many, many years ago that, that told me to just take five minutes and just stare at the wall. And I'm pretty sure I told her to F off. 
Um, because the thought of spending that five minutes in the pause was, was the worst thing I could think of on how, because I was so, so focused on, you know, not feeling, not connecting. So it felt so separate from, um, myself, who I was, um, that the thought of feeling into the, that, um, no, not, not a chance. So I, um, my, my question for you is, what is my question? My question is, um, what, what would you, for, for those, I guess for, for me at that place and for others in that place where the thought of, you know, that pause, um, that space, if that seems completely unrealistic, what, what would you offer to them? What recommendation would you provide to them to just that, that little step, that first yeah. step? Absolutely. I mean, who, who wants to feel the dissonance? Not a lot of people. I, it's, it's not like we stand here and say, yes, please. I'll, I'll take more of that feeling of, of guilt or shame or fear or anger or, any of these feelings that can pop up, worry, anxiety, these are not feelings that we enjoy feeling. And they become very physically acute in our bodies. And then we have a whole host of physical physical symptoms that, that are cropping up. And it's very, it's a very unpalatable idea to think about sitting with, in this pause, these feelings of discomfort. And yet, if we want to bring harmony into our being truly, we need to stand. We need to stand there. We need to stand in the space and, and I think it's very powerful. No matter where you are, the opportunity, the most the closest thing, and I and I referenced this at the beginning of our, our first talk last time, is is coming to your heart. Mm -hmm. No matter where you are, you can always put your hands over your heart and you can connect here. Closing your eyes, if you feel comfortable, is going to be very helpful because we bring in a lot of stimuli with our visual, with our sense of sight. And it's also something that has become quite valued in our society and in a lot of cultures. And so to bring, uh, to, to close off the sense of physical sight, to help to re begin to bring these other senses inward, I think is very helpful in coming into your heartbeat. I think that can be very grounding and coming into your breath. If you can get outside, mm. that's, that's even better. Maybe not even better. That's just icing on the cake because to go outside into nature and to get your feet on the ground. And maybe then you can either have your eyes closed and be listening to all of the sounds of nature that are around you. Um, or taking in the sights of the natural world around you, I think is something that can help you to harmonize with that divine center element. That's beautifully said. So just to kind of recap it, I mean, it's really just looking to, I mean, it's taking baby steps, right? It's, it's really like, and, and starting first with the here, um, putting your hands on your heart, um, just allowing for that, hello, remember me, that connection, um, there that maybe you've never, never experienced before, um, or maybe you're coming back to, and then, you know, it is the, the, maybe starting one by one, turning off the senses, whether it's the visual, the auditory, instead of listening to, you know, this show, maybe putting a pause on it and listen to the birds in nature, um, you know, 
I think in my in my case, it snowed about three inches here last night. So I would be out in my my boots, my winter boots, um, but just getting out in outside and taking in that fresh air. So we are going to take a quick break from there. Um, when we come back, we're just gonna we're gonna continue diving into into this um, choosing presence for divine alignment. Hello and welcome back to the Alchemy of Me, where I am with Miss Jessica Lang, and we are discussing the presence for divine alignment. And so to continue on kind of the path that we've been weaving throughout this exploration, um, I would like to kind of bring in nature um, and, and this idea of how um, nature plays into all this. And, and we've talked about it before and kind of like bringing in the seed. Can you kind of describe how, how this, um, how this plays into, into divine alignment? Sure. Absolutely. Yes. So we explored a little bit about the seed on um, the first time we were together, but to bring back in this visual, um, if you think about a seed pod, any type of seed, there is this structure of these outer layers and these outer structural elements are what protect the life inside, the, the essence. It's a physical vessel that carries the blueprint for life inside. Mm -hmm. And we too, we can, what's beautiful, this is more of a hermetic principle of wisdom, mm -hmm. is that the re, what is what we see on the outside is a reflection of, of, of what is inside. And so we too are this, we have this physical vessel, this physical sacred temple, and we carry within this, these, these seeds of light consciousness within our center. And so for us to bring our awareness to the center, all, all of that, 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 that light consciousness, these seeds of light consciousness, this divine consciousness that we hold within as part of the very fabric of our being at the center is is protected by all of these outer layers and this kind of creates this um i guess maybe not exactly a conundrum but we do need to find a way to presence inward when we are living in a very physical world that is guided by all of our five physical senses and all of these other senses that we have that um, really delineate and deepen into the five physical senses that we don't necessarily have practice and awareness on and or education about or really tap into, those are what can help us to presence with this, these seeds of light consciousness within that are always, always singing in this beautiful harmonic resonance with true, true divine peace. And so connecting in with the nature that is around us is a wonderful way of welcoming an awareness of the beauty that we see outside and around us, even the beauty that we see in another is mm -hmm. really a reflection, a reflection of that beautiful essence of divine light and sacred beauty and truth that is the essence of light, light consciousness. So, 
nature is one of our greatest teachers. I love that. And it's, you know, the visual of that, of, you know, with, with respect to this conversation, you know, thinking of, as you're describing the seed and, and the role it plays and, and how it is, you know, you can kind of, I think of it for like reflect it, reflecting on my own journey and, and, you know, like the seed within and for how many years that seed remained dormant, right. In that, in that darkness, in the soil, um, the fertile void. I mean, there's so many different ways to just think of what that richness too, you know, it's not, not a negative at all, really. I mean, it's, it's taking on those challenging life experiences um, that really can be um, an opportunity to um, a, a richness of life where it's, you know, it's part of the medicine if we allow it to be. Um, and then when, um, you know, the time is right, it's allowing that seed to um, poke out um, out of the soil and and truly to show to show form and then to grow and grow. And it's just, I don't know. I just love, I love that because it feels, it feels so good. I mean, it's just that again, coming back to even just that pause right now that you can experience when you are in nature and you see that, you know, that, that first sign of spring, that, um, that the seedling coming out, bursting out of the, out of the soil. Um, and that's the same for each and every one of us, that opportunity that's available to us. Um, so I just love that. I don't know if you want to add to that. Well, just, I mean, I, I do feel, I mean, the snow is also beautiful, but I imagine mm -hmm. that you would like <laughs> a little yes. more warm. And <laughs> for here on the East Coast um, in Brent, Old Providence, uh, we have been blessed with this burgeoning of, of spring here so everything is popping and it is a beautiful time in this remembrance of this just beautiful connection between the seed and the fruit the seed and the bloom and the fruit that comes from that and mm -hmm. the fruit bears within the seed and it is this whole cycle again nature is our greatest teacher and this is in so many ways in itself an offering for us to hold on to and to see um, the truth, which is we are not separate from source. The, the same divine intelligence that has created the seed is the same divine intelligence that is the intelligence from which we originate or that we are, we, we, that I won't go too deep into that. We can go, <laughs> go into that in another conversation, but yes, it's just an, another opportunity to, to recognize these divine pattern patternings and this divine blueprint of life. Mm -hmm. And we mirror nature mirrors to us that we are all part of the same divine essence and so it draws us closer to the center and as we come closer to the center we move away from the polarity and the du duality and we welcome in this non-dual unity consciousness and that is where we can presence with this divine alignment we can presence with the sacred where we can welcome in in any movement of our moment of our choosing, this peace. And even if we pause 50 times a day, 100 times a day, to pause and breathe, and maybe it's maybe you have to say, I trust, I trust, I trust a million times a day, I've done this. <laughs> to come to pause, heart, nature, this is for me. I am whole. I am here. This is for me. 
I am loved and there is beauty and there is goodness in this for me. Thank you. That is a, that is so powerful because there is this, um, you know, just the general, you know, state of where, where things are right now in, in the world. Um, and, you know, some of this, these pieces we're talking about, um, feel so out of alignment with the, the general noise that's out there. Um, and it just, it doesn't feel good. I'm just, it just doesn't. This, this feels good. And so I just want to, I just want to restate again what you said, which is we are not separate. We are, we are one. We are all connected. And I think that is so, if that's the only thing you take out of the, the nearly two hours of conversation that we have, I feel like that is a, that's super important because that's kind of the, that's the starting point, right? Just to remember that we're not alone. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that really embodying that truth is a journey mm -hmm. and it's accessible to anyone. And it begins with these choice points of, of trust, gratitude, faith. These are things we have to come to and it's practice. And again, it's these, it's choice points throughout the day. We get to choose where we are directing our awareness in this cacophony of sound and distraction around us that's pulling us away from the truth, that's pulling us away from the center. So how, so with that, how would you say, you know, if there's, these feelings of, you know, the anger, the fear, um, you know, the, the recognizing, and, you know, the first piece is kind of just being aware that, okay, this is where I'm at. Because a lot of time, I know when I was in it, in the thick of it all, I didn't even know. I was moving way too fast to even recognize where I was at. I was just doing upon doing upon doing. And so I had no idea. And even sometimes um, I'm just going to, because I'm human and we all are, right? I mean, we're having this experience together. Uh, I shift back into that where it is this, you know, back on the hamster wheel, not interested. And so it's a quick, you know, recognizing when I'm doing it, laugh about it a little bit, decide whether or not, because it's a choice, decide whether or not I want to continue down that path or if I'm ready to shift back into a place of, of, of the center. And so, so with that, how do we, how do, how do we have the feelings of fear and anger? How do we step out of that? How do they, how do they, how do they shift how we experience life? Can you kind of talk about that? Thinking of it from like a, the harmonics and, um, how we can how we can shift out of this place where it's like the collective where things are at and then it feels like everything around us is in this in this place how do we kind of just to wrap to wrap this piece up how do people get there i think that a lot of the emotions that you're you're speaking of the the fear and the anger and the anxiety, all of these, these feelings that bring a lot of discomfort mm -hmm. and are pulling us away from feeling peace is, is number one is going to this, this understanding that our attachment to how we think things should be in this moment, how we want things to be what we think things should look like, anything that is taking us out of a reconciliation and acceptance and in trust that this, this moment is, is for us, 
um, because we can we can spend a lifetime running away from these different feelings. But the feelings are there as they're in, they're indicating that something is not di- is is not in resonance. So they are something to tune into so that we can ask ourselves in that moment, how can I feel better right now? How can I make myself more comfortable right now in and not looking to everything that society hands to us as a coping mechanism for feeling better in the moment through further distraction or other things that um, are probably even more toxic than distractions. Um, Mm -hmm. So we do need to give ourselves a lot of grace and a lot of forgiveness as we're in the moment and be gentle with ourselves because it's not fun to feel those feelings, but we do need to be curious about what is it, what, what it, I'm feeling this way and how can I make myself more comfortable in this moment? How can I ground into some truth right now and connect back to the light and, and the truth? That's connecting into your heartbeat. It is connecting into, into nature. It is, that's, that is, that is what's true and coming into the center and releasing attachments to how we think certain things or this moment should be looking like or feeling like, or the way it should be. Um, that non-attachment piece is important and it's another deep dive. That's another rabbit hole. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, that can go into it it's, it is. And, and the one, you know, just to, to put a bow on that, you know, thinking of how it, it is, like you were saying, it's like the grace that we give ourselves being gentle with ourselves. It's so important on this journey because it's the, the things that we say to ourselves when we don't give ourselves that grace, that's actually more damaging than being on the hamster wheel. So um, with that, uh, let's pause for another break. And when we come back, we're going to shift gears a little bit and, and talk about the harmony of the center. Uh, before we do that, Jessica, do you want to let, let people know how they can get in contact with you? Sure. Thank you. Um, let's see. You can reach out to me via email. It's jessica at cacaomoonalign.com. You can also go to my website, which is cacaomoonaligned.com. And you can also find me on Instagram, and that is at Believe, Lead, Empower. Beautiful. Thank you, Jessica. And we'll be right back. Welcome back to the Alchemy of Me, where I'm here with Jessica Lang, and we're going to dive right back in to choosing presence for divine alignment. And and before we before we transition to the harmony of the center, I'd actually like to um, for Jessica to share a transmission she received from Spirit, um, kind of re- regarding this um, this you know how we how we align with the center. So could you just share that with us, Jessica? I would love to. Thank you. Yes. Okay. The purity of light, the sacred energy, the divine essence of the center is a well, a fountain from which we may drink to refresh, to renew, to cleanse, to purify, and to align ourselves to harmonize with the resonant field the dynamic pulse, the infinite one source. Feelings of anger and fear create stances of attachment and judgment, and these create distance. They reinforce a perception of separation, and they create a barrier to the space of the center, and that is a separation from God, one's true self, divine essence. So to create sacred space, To welcome and honor the womb-like space is to break free from the mold, the script, 
the routine stepping outside of and beyond the linear time into our hearts to presence with the freedom of the Holy Spirit. Our soul is dynamic and expansive. It is not meant to be confined. So it begins with choice. Do you choose to hold space for yourself? Do you choose to practice awareness? Do you choose to pause? May we discover stillness, welcome awareness, and empower ourselves with choice points of gratitude, discernment, trust, and faith. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so much power in that message, obviously. Can you, with that, can you kind of, and I think you had three, maybe three or four questions there at the end. Can you just repeat those questions again? And let's just pause for a moment between each one. So just for a moment of um, reflection. Absolutely. So, so do you, our soul is dynamic and expansive. It is not meant to be confined. So it begins with choice. Do you choose to hold space for yourself? It begins, it begins right there. It's, it's a question. And maybe, maybe there is a question of, of, of worthiness. Maybe if we're not busy all of the time, mm. maybe, maybe who knows what would, who knows what would happen. Maybe even just getting curious about that. What would happen if I didn't do X, Y, Z? What would happen if I said, I can actually, I can maybe do that later. Actually, I'm important as well. My self-care is important. My well-being, my, my, my whole being is, is important and worthy of, actually, I'm going to put this down and I'm, I'm going to go sit down right now. I'm going to go put my face in the sun. Mm. I'm just going to sit here and listen to my breath for a few minutes. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to pause here and, and, and I'm going to be, and that's enough. Those are radical choice points that you can make within your day. And to be in awe. I mean, I think of that when you just said to, to, I mean, to, to pause and just experience and, and to notice your breath and just thinking of how wild is that in itself? Just the fact that we breathe, the automatic function of just breathing that we do that keeps us alive and, and that kind of just that gift of what that is, that each breath, um, looking at the cloud, you know, it's just, there's, there's so many things. I mean, you could, we could, it, it is, it's just the being those things that we, a lot of times take for granted that the beauty that is within us and all around us. Absolutely. When we, when we look at a tree, we are not wondering, gee, you would be more beautiful. If, I mean, what we're not expecting the tree to be anything other than to be. And yet yes. we come in and we are also these beautiful seed bearing fruit blooming here in this time space. And we have been born into these systems and cultures and societies and into this time space right now in which our value is placed upon what we do. And there is not enough on nurturing our essence to allow for the space for us to naturally be and embody what we are. Yeah, so let, let's be gentle with ourselves like we are with these beautiful blooming trees that are outside right now. Yes, covered in snow. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> It is beautiful though. Snow. Snow. <laughs> it's beautiful. I mean, it's still, it's, it is beautiful, right? It is all, you know, how the lens in which I'm choosing to see it through today. I wanted to wear flip flops. I'm going to wear snow boots instead. And there's still beauty in that, right? Um, One more invitation to, to presence with those crystalline structures. And yes of that. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. So, oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. ahead. Please. Uh, There were just two other questions, but I think we covered, do you, do you choose to practice awareness and do you choose to pause? And I, I, Those I did right not now. pause. That was the problem. <laughs> oh, I, good. All very exciting. So yes, yes. We have the grace to allow ourselves to occasionally speak at the same time because we're so yes, excited. yes. And I'll forgive myself for speaking over you. <laughs> It's just going to happen when we get excited about this um, opportunity. And, and with that, so we only have a few more minutes and I am going to do, to take a total 90 degree turn here um, and see if you're open to it. Um, because I don't, I don't want to uh, dive into the harmony of the center. I don't think we give enough opportunity to that. So can, would you be open to just, um, maybe like a two minute meditation, um, to kind of close us out, maybe bringing in those pieces that we talked about, maybe those questions and then we'll close. Sure. sure. Well, how about we, or how about we just drop into some presencing and I, I'm not sure where everyone is kind of tuning in from and I you know I'm not exactly sitting outside on the grass, but maybe we can just kind of bring in a quick little visual meditation there. Yeah. Yeah. And just, a, just really br- maybe, maybe a minute is probably all we have. So what I love doing is I like to take my left hand and place it over my heart and take my right hand and place it, right over my belly button, sacred navel center. It's kind of uh, in between your solar plexus and your sacral chakra. Or you can put your hand down over your sacral chakra, right below your belly button, whatever feels good to you in this moment. They, they both work. And just taking a moment to pause and sensing into first just this strong foundation that is beneath you, all of the earth that is beneath you, the land upon which you are sitting, all of the ancestors that have walked the lands upon which you are sitting, knowing that they are all here supporting you here and now in this moment, and also opening up to the sensation of the crown of your head And whether you're outside or not, just remembering how good that feels to have the sun shining down on the crown of your head. And just starting to bring this presence of awareness, how you are this connection between the sun and the earth, the light and the earth, the fire of the sun, the light of the sun and the earth. And this clear flowing channel that is enabled as you bring awareness to your sacred breath. Just knowing with each breath you take with this conscious awareness, you are inviting this loving dance with creation, bringing in your beautiful being as as a bridge between two worlds, the seen and the unseen, and allowing a beautiful flow of energies to to flow through your being. Each breath, seeing this exchange of light, of air, of love, flowing through all of the channels of your being. One heartbeat. Just inviting that breath in, maybe making it audible, and <laughs> I could probably stay there for a while. Yeah. <laughs>
Thank you. That was beautiful. And yes, I could stay there for a while, but I know, uh, I know we need to wrap it up and maybe that just means we, we breathe together, uh, next time just for, just for a whole hour. So thank you, Jessica, for being here yet again on the Alchemy of Me and, Thank you to everybody that tuned in. Um, it's an honor to to share this space with space with you. And any any parting words, Jess, before we wrap up? Um, just um, gratitude to you for having me together with you in this beautiful space um, for the opportunity to co-create together, to be present here, dreaming together. And just, I wish everyone gives themselves the grace to, to come to their heart this day, as many moments as they, they can allow for that space and empower yourself to pause. Thank you, dear sister. Amen to that. And I will, um, uh, with that, I'll just say, uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you, everyone, and have a beautiful day. Thank you for listening to The Alchemy of Me, where we navigate the anatomy of humanity through the lens of science and spirituality. For more mind, body, energy, medicine concepts, tools, and practices to nourish the seeds, the light, the fire, that gold of intelligence that is you, tune in every first and third Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on TransformationTalkRadio.com. For more information about me and my work, please visit TonyaJohnson.com. That's TonyaJohnson.com.